everyone, welcome to Volleyball DNA, where we examine the characteristics that make up some of the most intriguing personalities in the world of volleyball. I'm Dendan Lazaro. And I'm Anton Rojas. The subject for this episode has one of the most inspiring stories we have ever come across with regards to the sport. She overcame major obstacles, such as restarting her life halfway across the world and career-threatening injuries to become a champion, not just in the UAAP, but off the court as well. We are so honored to have her on the show to relive her amazing journey. Let's all welcome Kat Valentino. Hi, Kat! Hi! Hey! Good morning! Morning here. What time is it yeah, there? Yeah, morning there. Um, it's 6 p.m. Ooh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Nice. So it's not that hard for me. I mean, for you guys, you're probably just like getting energy still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're 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 riding on coffee right now. <laughs> <laughs> so how have you been, Kat? I, you know, this is some sort of a milestone for us since you know we're we're we just started the show, and this is the first time we're actually interviewing somebody who is halfway across the world in Canada. <laughs> so thank you for the time. Thank you for the time, Kat. No problem. So you're in Canada no, now, Kat? No. Like, are you yeah. in Vancouver? Yeah, I'm in Vancouver right now. Okay. Because yeah. what we have in our profile, <laughs> in your profile, you're from Richmond, British Columbia. I don't know anything yeah. about Canada. So where is that? Um, it's actually like in the west coast of Canada. It's like near, you know, Seattle. Or mm -hmm. I don't know, it's in the bottom part of North America. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was doing a little bit of research about uh, Richmond, British Columbia, Canada. So it's like a coastal area in, in, in Canada and it's near like the Vancouver airport. Is that right? Yeah, the airport, like my, the airport's near uh, maybe like 15 minutes away. So it's super convenient for us. Yeah. Okay. So we've, we've uh, talked to a lot of athletes already um, and most of them, like the ones who play in the UAAP or the NCAA, a lot of them come from the provinces around the Philippines. But then we also want to hear what it's like for somebody who comes from halfway across the globe, like yourself. So um, as a Phil Canadian who, who grew up in, in Richmond, we're, we're pretty curious about what was it like for you growing up as a kid? Like, what's the main sport there in, in Richmond? Um, Actually, the main sport of like Canada is actually hockey mm. and um, volleyball wasn't really the most exciting sport here. And actually, when I was in um, high school and college, because I went to college for one year here, um, volleyball wasn't that well watched. Um, actually, it'd only be like family members or friends. Mm. So very different compared to the Philippines. And yeah, growing up, I played a few sports. I played basketball and I played soccer or football. So, um, but volleyball was really the one that I stuck with and like really learned to love. But how did you start playing volleyball if you started out with basketball and football? Um, actually, because first, I actually didn't like football. Uh, I hated being outside and playing in the grass. So I ended up choosing um, to play basketball and volleyball in high school. So I hated basketball because it's so aggressive and it's so, um, so much contact and so much running. And um, volleyball was just something I was naturally good at, or I was also tall, so it was okay. Um, but then I guess uh, I stuck with volleyball because I enjoyed it more, a lot more than basketball. I heard it was your older sister, Stephanie, who was the first one in the family to actually play volleyball. Is that right? Um, yeah, she's the one who introduced me to the sport and who I'd always watch when I was younger. Um, I would um, go to her games and I would always uh, be in the sidelines and just watch and follow her like because she'd have tournaments every weekend and I would actually go with her and travel with her and that's really when I started to like be interested in the sport but um, I still was too young to play. We have a really good profile of your career here in the Philippines <laughs> but we want to know more about your career there in Canada. Yeah. Like, did you start did oh, you start it in high school? Um, I actually started in grade five and um, in elementary school. So I was playing there and it's kind of just for fun. I mean, there's no specific position yet, right? In grade yeah. five. 
Um, but then in high school, um, that's when it became more serious. And in Canada, there's like a club team and a high school team. So uh, you actually play for, for both. I mean, it's basically volleyball year round. And for me, the club team is the more competitive and more, um, more intense type of volleyball. So yeah, I played all through high school and then I played club volleyball for a team called Air Attack. And that's the Richmond League, which is where I live. Um, and then for most of my high school, I play also for my provincial, it's kind of like province team. So yeah, I played for them as well. And basically my volleyball was year round, just, um, just in different leagues. So grade school, you were in math, secondary school, and then high school, Trinity Western University. Is, is that right? Yeah. Oh, you guys have all the information. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, we, we, so... <laughs> we try, we try. <laughs> yeah. No. I was surprised, actually. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay. Um, you said you went to college for, for one year over there in Canada, right? Oh. What, what, what did you take up? Yeah. Like, uh, like what, what course? Like, let, like let's say uh, you didn't like go all the way with volleyball like what did you envision your life to be like like what job did you imagine imagine yourself um uh partaking in um i i went to trinity and took um business management okay so um i guess i was hoping to take something in regards to like sports management or opening up something related to volleyball here mm -hmm. um that was at the time and yeah i just attended for one year so I'm still in business management. I mean, I took business again in Ateneo. Nice. Okay. So, okay, moving on to a different topic naman, Kat. Because both your parents are from USP. They're Tomasians. But your brother, mm -hmm. Vince, abutan ko siya in Ateneo eh. He, well, he played for Ateneo. He went here to the Philippines to play for the Ateneo basketball team. What did you think about his move? here to the Philippines to play basketball and study college here. And at that time, did you think that you yourself were going to make that move as well? Um, actually, when he moved there, um, I was still in high school and I think grade 10 or 11. And he, I was actually kind of shocked. I still remember the day so vividly of him telling us and t saying that um, Ateneo was willing to take him and everything. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that, I was like, oh, what? why would you moved to the Philippines. I mean, he was already going to college here and um, we had a good life here and everything is kind of set for us and all of our friends and all of our families here. So actually when he did move, I was kind of skeptical and I was like, why, why would you want to live somewhere where it's so hot? I mean, I'd only been to the Philippines like a handful of times. So my experience was that, of course, it's very hot, but um, that's mostly my impression of the Philippines. So I was like, um, like why give up what you have in Canada? So I wasn't actually totally on board with him moving there. Hmm. So I guess w w with that statement that you just made, you did not imagine yourself doing the same thing at the time. Oh, um, I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> it was definitely um, a big change for me and I wasn't in one of the things I was thinking about when I was graduating high school. I was definitely not thinking oh, I'll move halfway across the world or I'll go to school in the Philippines. Um, I was really just thinking local or um, just nearby. So yeah, that was definitely a game changer. Yeah, because uh, I also have a lot of cousins who live in the, the States and they had opportunities also to study in the Philippines, but they were always like, oh, I don't want to restart my life over here. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to leave my friends and, and everything that they had back in the States. So, so I understand like w where you're coming from. But like in a previous interview with, with your schoolmates, Marty and Trina, um, mm -hmm. you, you mentioned that you actually went to Ateneo to visit Vince. And during that time, coach Roger Goreyev was still the coach of the women's volleyball team. Yeah, that was um, a long time ago. Um, yeah. I was grade 11. Um, I'm, he, yeah, he was the coach and I was with, I'm not sure at the den if you were there, but because it was like with May, Ate May and mm -hmm. Gretchen Ho. And even I remember meeting Ate Lai also. So uh, I'm, I don't 
exactly remember everyone there, but the main person who I met was Gretchen, um, Gretchen Ho, just because she was the captain at the time, right? And um, I actually was just visiting Vince, and I was um, there for vacation for a few weeks. And uh, for some reason, he was like, oh, why don't you just play for fun with the Ateneo girls in Beg? And I remember being like, oh, what's Beg? Or like, what's that place <laughs> or whatever? <laughs> yeah, I really had no, I was really clueless with everything about the Neo. I didn't even know the, the university or anything. So when he told me that, I was kind of like, oh, well, I'm here for vacation. Why would I play volleyball? And like, I don't have my shoes. I don't have knee pads. I don't really have anything here. But um Somehow, I think I think it was my mom. She ended up saying like, "Oh, just go for it for fun. Why not?" And I actually got into an argument with her. I remember that day also. Um, she was she was just saying, "You have nothing to lose." So, of course, I went, but I went with like um, with negative attitudes, and of course, um, I just didn't really feel comfortable because it's a different school, let alone a different country that I'm playing in. So, yeah, I met all the girls, and I met. Uh, I really remember meeting. Um, uh, oh yeah, she was very nice, and everyone was very nice. But at the back of my head, I was like, "Oh, um, I'm I'm gonna go to school in Canada. I'm gonna go to university there." So yeah, that was definitely a weird um, experience for me. But Dan was definitely there because the last time Coach Roger coached Ateneo was 2013. Dan, do you remember Kat actually going to Ateneo that day? No, I don't. I remember <laughs> her being, or her mom being at Coach Tai's training. Oh, yeah, okay. I don't think you were, you might have not been there that day because I feel mm -hmm. like I would have somewhat remembered you. I really remember at the May, mm -hmm. at the gym, at the Lai, and maybe you weren't there for practice that day or something. Yeah. I don't know. I would have remembered her. I mean, she's six yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Kat, because there are a lot of um, different reports about your height, so we just want to set the record straight. There are articles that say you're 6'1", 6'3", 6'2", 6' flat, so we want to get it straight from you. Your official height is? Well, you measure it, it's supposed to be, like, it said they say 6 feet, but then obviously when I wear shoes, I'm 6'1". I don't know where they got 6'2 from. I think they just want to keep adding and adding. <laughs> when I got... When I um, was introduced in the Ateneos, they called me, they said I was 6'3", so they just like to add, I guess. Yeah, so to six, intimidate six other one. schools. The, the, yeah. the, the, the tallest I saw was 6'5". I'm yeah, like, I was what? Like, <laughs> ano <ba> talaga? <laughs> I'd be taller than Jaja. <laughs> yeah, I'd be taller than Jaja. So, I don't know, I just uh, go with it now. So after that initial experience of having to go to Ateneo and you didn't really like enjoy that experience of yours because you didn't expect to play volleyball in Ateneo. You didn't have any like thought of even being there. But what mm -hmm. finally made you decide to, you know, move from Manila? I moved from Canada to Manila. Um, I guess it was actually it didn't happen right away because when I went there, I was grade 11, right? So I still had to finish grade 12 and then I would decide. But when I went there, um, I, uh, what happened? Oh yeah. Um, I didn't even think about Ateneo still until I was first year university here. So what, what happened was um, I went to college here in Canada for one year and I was okay with that. And I was happy with that decision after graduating high school to go to Canada. I mean, to go to university in Canada. But then um, I got injured again, my second ACL tear. So that was the biggest, um, uh, that was the biggest influence, I think. Um, I guess the way that the school and my experience with that university that I went to, it wasn't that great. And having a re-injury and a re-tear of my ACL was definitely a big factor of me um, giving Ateneo another chance or looking at that as another opportunity to help myself. Uh, my experience with rehab in my other school wasn't as great and I didn't feel as connected with the university. So yeah, I mean, um, and then I guess Sir Ricky, he um, is the one who heard about me getting re-injured for my second ACL and then he flew here and had dinner with my dad and I and just said, oh, if she wants to do rehab in the Philippines, you have a great program and 
were willing to still take her um, despite her second injury. And I was like, oh, well, maybe because it's hard to keep up with um, the universities here. There's so much, um, there's, the level is a little bit different. So I just felt I wouldn't be able to catch up to these girls. And I just thought maybe Ateneo could be a fresh start for me. Wow. Um, it, it's amazing how one negative experience can eventually turn into a positive. Because, because you're telling us that it was actually the injury that, mm -hmm. that kind of like gave you the idea that you wanted to restart. And like when we say restart, we're, we're talking about you restarting your life somewhere else, halfway across the world. And, you know, that's not easy for, for anybody to do. But obviously, you've experienced playing in Canada and then volleyball. You, you played it in the Philippines. Like, were, were there any major differences right away with, with, the, with regards to the style of play when you first came to to the Philippines? Did you feel the difference? Um, I think the the first thing I noticed was how often you guys trained. Um, I joined when Coach Tai was the coach. And um, actually in Canada, it's very different. We don't actually train twice a day. And it's not as long or not as high intensity. And I thought that maybe the Philippines, I like, I underestimated it actually, I thought, maybe it'd be a little bit easier. That's why I actually moved there and I thought I'd be able to ah. handle it. But little did I know it's like three times or like worse and well, not worse, but just like more intense. And like I said, I hate running, right? And mm -hmm. Atiden knows this, right? With Coach Tai, like that's all we did. And I thought that's that- That's so I was, true. <laughs> yeah. That's all we did. Oh my God. Yeah, I, and I was I, like, I oh, knew. I thought I'm playing. I, I knew, I knew, I knew this would eventually lead back to the Oval again. Yeah, I'm sure that a lot of your guys' interviews lead back to the Oval. <laughs> From like <laughs> Rex to Maddie and then Dina and then how you. Yeah. <laughs> eventually I mean, the Oval. <laughs> I mean, it's weird for me because I chose volleyball so I could get away from running, but it kind of had an opposite effect. So, yeah. What was your What was your initial reaction hearing that you were gonna run at like six a.m. in the morning every day? Um, I thought it was uh, actually not. I thought they were joking, or I thought that it's just <laughs> not exaggerated, right? You think yeah. that people are exaggerating? You run five rounds every day, but. Honestly, it, once it was once I was there, I couldn't really be like, oh, okay, um, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, I moved to the Philippines for volleyball. I can't just give up because of running. Yeah. I didn't enroll for track and field. I went here yeah, for... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Got, um... No offense, though, but I just, yeah, I mean... I no no offense to Coach Tai, but yeah, that was a lot of running. <laughs> <laughs> We all think the same, Kat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kat, um, aside from the, the, the excessive amount of training, um, with regards to the style of play, like, mm -hmm. because obviously in, in Canada, you're playing with, with girls as tall or taller than you, but here in the Philippines, you're one of the tall, tallest players. So yeah. did, did, did you feel that? And, and what, how was it for you to adjust? Um, I definitely felt the way the pace of the game is a lot faster. Um, here, the height uh, definitely makes a difference. Um, uh, it's not really that uh, ca Canadians or the people who are playing with it is better, but the, the advantage of having height, you don't really have to have speed or like as much agility as um, the Philippines has. And I think when, once I got there, I kind of saw how intense and how fast everyone is and like, oh, will I even fit into the system of volleyball here? Um, how will I adjust to even the coaching style, even having a coach? I didn't know Coach Tai would be the coach, and I didn't know there'd also be that language barrier. So a lot of stuff. I mean, when I came, actually, when I had experienced Coach Roger and their training versus Coach Tai, um, it was definitely a shock to me. But I'd say that the Philippines is very disciplined and very um, hardworking, a lot a lot more hardworking than a lot of the teams I've trained with here. So I think that's definitely um, a plus for the Philippines. What position did you play in Canada? 
Um, I played middle my whole till I was like, oh yeah, until college. Wow, that's a yeah, huge so, change. Yeah, so I had to also adjust to playing open and then opposite. So, yeah. All right, Kat. Um, July 11, twenty fifteen. Uh, I'm I'm sure it's a date that you and your your family you know will always remember. Um, and and for us people who who covered you and uh, volleyball, uh, you were warming up for Ateneo in the Shakey's V League, and in um in in a freak turn of events, you hurt your right knee, and, and this was the knee that was supposed to be strong because. This this knee was the one that wasn't previously injured, but I want to focus on what happened after that. There there is this picture that that went viral, and it's a picture of you with your arms over the shoulders of your brother Vince and Eliza Valdez. And Eliza was you know had that you know familiar smile on her face, looking at you, trying to comfort you. Well, when you think of that moment and having those people pick you up when you were down again. Uh, what, what type of memories does it bring back? Um, oh, first of all, I'm surprised. Thanks again for also knowing the exact date and everything, because I even don't remember the date, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I remember the day. And I think um, having that whole experience, um, I when it happened, it was very fast. But it's still also uh, stuck in my memory for a long time, up until now. and. Um, I really just remember feeling like, oh, my knee like broke in half or like dislocated or something. I didn't think it was ACL. I thought it was like, so it's always painful for me whenever it happens. So um, seeing the picture and looking back at it, um, I guess the, the good side was that there were people supporting me and that the school was so, um, so uh, helpful and just welcoming and understanding with everything and having Atalai there to help pick me up as well. And my brother um, was definitely a, uh, something that I'll always look back at and be so thankful for that they're always supporting me. And I just um, think that day is something that definitely also changed a big part of my life. And it'll always be something that kind of triggers me or it kind of makes me anxious thinking about it. But it also... Um, has brought me to where I am now. So I'm just also thankful for that day. Well, coming back from a major injury, like tearing your ACL isn't easy. I mean, it's an ACL injury. It's For some, it's career ending. But for you, I think it's career changing. Life yeah, changing. that's a good point. <laughs> right? Or a good way to, yeah. It, it, it takes a toll on you, I'm sure, physically, mentally, and emotionally on all levels. But having to go through it three times and having to make a comeback is just unheard of. I mean, it's not just inspirational. You don't have words for it. I mean, having three ACL injuries in, in a span of how many years, what did it take for you to come, overcome what would seem like a career-ending injury? Um, I, I guess the, the way I look at it is that... Um, Every time I got injured, there was always something that happened for me and something that I learned from it. Um, I guess with the first injury, I was still very young. I was only grade 12. And I kind of was, um, I didn't really take my body, uh, like I didn't treat my body as well as I should have. And I was taking it for granted. And I guess having every time I'd get injured, I would always become more grateful for what I have and how I'm able to play the sport. But I guess um, having to overcome all of those it was definitely not easy. And I, I don't think I can say that I was optimistic every ACL injury or that I was always looking forward to playing even after the first, second, or, or actually the first and second, I was still very motivated to play still. I thought, oh, I'll, I'll bounce back from this. But by the third, I was definitely at a point where I was like, oh, um, b volleyball isn't for me anymore. Uh, maybe I moved to the Philippines for something else. Um, I was at a point where I was scared to even jump or even um, see other players jump as well because I got that trauma or that fear. And I guess it's kind of weird for me to think of it's just an injury, right? Like everyone gets injured. Um, but 
I think I got to a point where it's just too many consecutively and it was like back to back to back. So um, I just had to really learn to kind of accept what life throws at me and um, be consistent in my rehab despite uh, continually getting injured. Um, I guess that by the third ACL injury, I think the thing that I learned most was how to be patient. And I think a lot of the players who are going through the same thing can look at you and say that if Kat was able to come back, then I can do the same thing. Because I mean, like the setter of NU, Joy Mika Gande, she's going through mm -hmm. the same thing. She tore her ACL and then she re-injured her knee. So she's going through that same process. And, and this person was a very promising player, multiple best setter awards in high school. So I'm sure anybody who suffers the injury now and, and see and saw that you were able to come back and play the way that you did sees you as an inspiration. So with that said, I mean, we also want to look back at what, what could have been and the what ifs because, man, I'm just thinking, if, if you played in season 78, the last year of Eliza, and this was coming off the back-to-back -back championships, which then was a part of, do you ever go back and think like, man, we could have we could have three peated that year, if mm -hmm. if if I played like what what do you do you ever think about that if you if your if your UAP debut happened when it should have happened? Um, I mm. I don't actually look at it that way. Um, I think even. You can't really say like, oh, if I played, we would have won. I mean, there's no guarantee. Who knows how? I mean, you don't really know how how I would have played that year, especially being alongside um, such great players. Um, it's not saying that um, I didn't want to or like I wouldn't have uh, been able to keep up, but you just don't really know with that situation. I mean, they did have a strong team already and they were very um, well, uh, well bonded. So... Um, I guess you could say maybe oh, you would have won, but uh, that's not uh, something that I regret or something that I was like, oh, I wish I was part of it because um, looking back at it, I like or I still appreciate the way that my UAP career went. And I don't know, maybe something else would have happened if I played that year. Um, I You don't really know with these things, so after two years of waiting, you finally got to play in the UAAP in season 79. How was your rookie mm -hmm. experience then? Um, I, uh, it's kind of hard to even remember that. I, it's so weird because it feels like it's so long ago, but um, I, it went by fast for me, my rookie experience. And um, being able to play with um, Gia and experiencing the way she sets was definitely um, an, a, such a great experience for me. But at the same time, I feel like my rookie year was not some not really um, really as comfortable as I wanted to be as an athlete. I still had that adjustment year, and I think my rookie year was really me just being comfortable playing on the court with my um, fear of re-injury and just getting used to um, playing in a not just with a team but in that big of a crowd. And I think it was more of an adjustment period and. I still had, I wasn't a hundred percent yet. So, yeah. Yeah, your rookie year was full of adjustments. I mean, you were coming back from an injury, first time to play here in the Philippines, mm -hmm. and then adjusting to the style of play. Yeah, and, and playing really open fast. also. And playing open, that's yeah. right. You know what, from, from a commentator's standpoint, because we would already see you in the crowd watching the Ateneo games and Obviously, we couldn't miss you because of your height. And there were a lot of expectations. Like, I heard a lot of things about you. And there was one coach who actually said that you were better than Eliza. And I was like, wow, like, this Catalentino might be, like, the next Eliza Valdez. Like, somebody who could take over, you know, what she started in, in Ateneo. Did you feel those expectations, Kat? Um, I, going into Ateneo, I knew about Atelai and just the history of Ateneo and how they, the Cinderella story and everything. And having that expectation 
was pressuring for me, but I think I didn't even mind it because I was more concerned about my knee and my body and I wasn't even playing for this old oh, playing to be the best on the court to be the next Elisa Valdez because um, at the time I, I was still focusing on just being able to play safely and being comfortable with the team. So uh, I didn't let that get to me as much. Yeah, there were more pressing issues for you to focus on. <laughs> yeah. Like recovering. But how yeah. did it feel like playing in front of like a huge crowd in your in your debut? I mean, is it that different from when you were playing in Canada? Where it was the crowd as big when you were yeah. playing back there? Yeah, it was very different. Um, when I when I played my first game, it was against UST and I remember it was in Araneta and um the we have lunch as a team before and i remember feeling like i wanted to throw up and like i kept going to the bathroom and everyone else was like oh they were just having fun like just talking but me i was like oh i'm so nervous like why is nobody else like freaking out this is the first game <laughs> and even the day before i was like telling my friends like oh i'm i don't know why i'm so nervous it's like i haven't played well i didn't play volleyball for a while but it's also, yeah, the crowd. I mean, I've never played in a crowd that big before. Um, at most uh, here, maybe like 100 people or like, and those are all your family and your friends. And it's not like stadiums full and there's not, a, there's not drums. And yeah, so I was definitely saying that I was nervous is probably an understatement for my first game. <laughs> well, if you know any young people there who want to play volleyball who are Filipino, I mean, you can tell them that it's a big deal here. <laughs> Get them ready. Kat, um, your rookie year, looking at it, it was pretty decent. I mean, Ateneo had a 12-2 and record. You only lost to NU in the elimination round. You had a very good first um, Ateneo LaSalle game. You had 18 points uh, in the win. But those losses against NU, uh, do, do you remember them during your rookie year? Like, why was it so difficult to play against the Lady Bulldogs? Um, honestly, I can't even remember those games. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, like, it's like after my last year, I just forget what happened before just because my last year was so memorable. But... I'm um, trying to think the NU. Um, you do remember Jaja, even... right? Oh yeah, of course. I remember her warming up and I would cross the net and I'd be like, oh, she's actually like, she's pretty tall. But <laughs> the actual game, I don't, I don't really remember losing or I just thought that our first, my first year, I don't really remember losing for some reason. Maybe I, I moved it to the side or didn't want to remember, but yeah. What about the Ateneo La Salle rivalry? I'm sure you remember that. Well, oh yeah. In your first year, you went 12 and 2. The two losses only came from NU. So you swept La Salle in the eliminations, but when it got to the finals, you guys got swept. Ateneo got swept by La Salle. But how was the experience playing in that type of atmosphere? That, you know, Ateneo La Salle, it's such a big thing here. Um, I definitely remember the that fine uh, that final series and um, just how much how many people showed up and I guess it's one of those experiences where you're it's just nice to be a part of it being an athlete and having those experiences where it's not just the game you're focusing on and it, there's so many outs external factors like the crowd and how loud they are and I think I even remember there was um, someone in the crowd who was like uh, yelling so much and for me as a rookie, I would get distracted definitely. And I'll be honest, I'm not, um, I wasn't like fully, um, fully able to focus just because that crowd is really something that only a few athletes can experience. And I'm just thankful to have been part of it, especially a finals with Ateneo La Salle. That's definitely one of the, the dreams. And unfortunately we lost, but I'm still grateful to have experienced it. And I'm sure it, must have felt good for you and your family for you to actually finish an entire UAP season healthy. But I want to ask yeah. you about your second year, Kat. Um, you entered the top 10 in scoring in the UAAP. How did you feel physically during your second year? Did you feel like that 
your legs were getting stronger now and that that uh, you you had you you could endure a lot more of the the physical activities the trainings that you had to go through um i think my second year was definitely um really pushing my body to the limit um it it wasn't about any more fear um it was really just about improving my skill and that second year was more about learning to play in a team and learning to adjust with my teammates and um playing for them uh i guess i really learned to uh i really learned how valuable teammates are and how much of a family how much how special they can become and reach to a point where they're like a family and i really felt that my second year because i wasn't focusing any more on my injury and i was really learning to just love the sport and love the team so i really enjoyed my um second year let's move on to season 81 i'm sure this is your favorite season but <laughs> yeah. i was writing on this year cuz ateneo is coming off a season of not reaching the finals in how many years and this was the first year of coach o to coach the women's team you rose to the occasion and played probably the best volleyball we've seen you play here in manila but where did your confidence come from at this time um i i really believe that um it came from the team um it wasn't any more about just me playing as an individual or playing for um playing to win as uh, win awards or whatever it's really just playing so that we could reach this goal together and i really felt that with coach o and the way that he values how much you have to um work together and you have to sacrifice a lot in order to reach your goal and i really admired the way he made the championship as if it were the only thing that mattered to every one of us and if it didn't then you could um then he won't really mind you or you can just uh not really expect as much from yourself and i really, i think that it wasn't just physical um wasn't really just a physical part that i improved in but it was definitely a mental part where uh by then i was already a senior and i was um healthy and i'd been playing for 2 years um and my knees were really good um i didn't have as much pain and i wasn't as scared uh so at least by my last year i was focusing mostly on my skill but um i guess coach o was able to bring up a side bring out a side of me that really just um really shown uh, or sorry really like i don't know how to put it but really just brought out the best in me and i i think it's also just by how hard we worked that year and how much we sacrificed and i think sometimes you think oh it was easy or she, she why didn't she just do that 2 years ago or why didn't she play like that in season 80 but to be honest it's really a build up of all those years of hard work to a point where i reached my senior year and all of a sudden people think oh i i improved so much but honestly it's because of the season 79 and season 80 that i played like that so how did it feel to finally win a uap championship after everything you've been through um it was uh it was weird I, it wasn't like <laughs> super like you you think oh you'd have so much excitement and so much joy but honestly by the finals game or the championship i kind of already had that feeling in my heart and in my mind that we were going to get this championship and that actually even in maybe mid season i already started feeling like there's no way we can't win this championship with how much we sacrificed and how hard that year was for everyone so it wasn't like a one moment of such um excitement or just relief it was a build up and i think that whole uap season um 81 was just um just a uh, uh, wait sorry i lost my train of thought um <laughs> was <laughs> was i saying what was it was just expected for me just cuz i saw the way my team was playing and how how they were really working hard and i just knew already from the start that we would definitely get this championship this year you know what cat come to think of it because i mean a lot of your teammates they're very emotional like when they score when they make an amazing play they they, they shout a lot like say bea 
uh, Maddie, Dina, but you... Dina. <laughs> yeah, Dina, of course. But, but you, can you're pretty chill. I remember interviewing you right after you guys won the championship. And I was trying to get the crowd into it, like asking them if they wanted you to come back to play your final mm-hmm. year. And you were just standing there like chill. And then you, you, were, you were just saying like, uh, uh, relax, I'm, I'm going to decide. And then <laughs> later on that night, um, you signed off. Um, and, and everybody was shocked because like at, at, at the Mall of Asia Arena, everybody was excited and cheering you on, hoping that you would come back. Did you know during that time that you wouldn't? And that, like at that time, huh? at that time that you would really sign off and say that was your final UAP match? Yeah, I actually already knew. Um, I. I had actually told even some of my teammates that we have to win this year so that um, I can already be done with my UAP career and I can move on to another thing in my life. And I had, uh, I remember even talking to Bea about it being like, we can't, because we, when we lost in, I think it, it was the semis against FEU um, game one and it was the best, or we had, we had twice to beat advantage, but we lost game one. So I remember, um, talking to Bay, like, oh my God, like we can't lose this year because if we lose this year, I'm definitely gonna come back and go through those twice a day training, so 6 a.m. Coach O yelling always and just everything <laughs> all over again. And I was like, I don't think I can handle that. I mean, not saying that it was a bad experience, but I'm kind of older, right? So I was yeah. just saying, like, I don't think my body can handle another year of coach O training, um, the intensity, and I don't think I will be able to keep up. And for me as an athlete, you want to prolong your volleyball career and you want to play as long as you can until um, a certain age. And think in my head, I was already graduating college and I was older than the girls because I was set back because of my ACL injuries. So I just thought to myself, um, if we had won that year, there's no need for me to play another year because I'd already, um, I already accomplished what I came to Ateneo to do, which was to win a championship. So think, the way I thought was, um, there's nothing that can top your first championship, right? And there's nothing that can beat um, that feeling. And I didn't want to come back to Ateneo having to go through it all again and then say something does happen or there's a lot of um, doubt that could happen uh, a lot of doubt that came into my head at the time, thinking, what if, if I played my fifth year, there could something could happen or we might not win. And I guess it wasn't as optimistic, but I was trying to also be realistic with my body and how my knees felt. So, But later on, a couple of months later, you decided to come <laughs> yeah. back and play your yeah, last year. So what made you decide yeah. to do so? Um, it was definitely those six months where I played pro and those six months of being away from the school and being away from the team um, and the girls. And just, I guess I kind of felt that um, pro was a a good level and I was able to um, experience it. And I definitely enjoyed it. I mean, I was lucky enough to be with coach O and with um, Bea, Maddie and Kim. Um, But I think those six months, I just felt like something was, missing and I don't it's kind of hard to say I mean you've definitely experienced it I you know how it is to play for a UAP school and Ateneo and just how and how amazing that that level it is when you're um, in that uh, in the school and you're not just playing for say money or you're not playing for this organization you're playing for pride and you're playing for uh, I, I it's kind of hard to explain but it's just you lose that sense of motivation. And I really felt it when I was playing pro just because, um, I don't know, I think it's just that UAP experience and it's, I'm sure a lot of other athletes can relate, but yeah. Just curious, Kat, what were your other career plans? Like say after graduation and aside from playing pro, did you have any other plans for yourself like outside of the sport? Um, I I hadn't really even thought about it. Um, I mean, uh, I have a, a business management degree and it's mm. something I can always look into and starting a business or 
um, doing something maybe corporate, but it's just uh, I at right now I'm I was or at the time I was really focused on volleyball and I thought that oh I'll just focus on playing pro for now and really mm-hmm. just improving my game. So no, I didn't have like set plans yet. Coming into season eighty two, how confident were you that? you were going to defend your championship, that you were going to get that back-to-back championship? Um, I, actually, that's one of the, thing, the, one of the reasons also why I wanted to play again. Um, I, I knew that the, the girls' team would be strong even if I wasn't there. Or, um, and I guess I, I saw how much potential they had. And it wasn't even just watching them in off season, but I just knew that the way Coach O coached and the way he instilled this um, this mindset of only the championship and everything, I knew that this team could even win the championship without me. But um, I guess I missed the team and I had that feeling that they can win it. And even if saying that they can win it without me is just such a big statement of how much I believe in this team this year, or sorry, yeah, this season 82, and how I believe that we could have won the championship. And I mean, it's sad because it ended so abruptly, but um, I had so much faith in the team that we could have won it this year. It, it was a big deal when you decided that you were going to come back, like when it was announced, but it wasn't just you. Joanna Maragitnot came back. Jamie LaVittoria came back. Dina did not come back because of her injury. So for you, like because every team is special. Every team has has certain components that you're confident about. In that particular team, the season 82 team, like what made it different, say, from the championship team that you had in season 81? Um, I think it's it's not necessarily that one team is better than the other. Um, uh, to be honest, I really think that we have the, the season 82 team um, has a lot of skill and a lot of just natural talent that could have been um, that would have been improved even more under Coach O. But the season 81, it was all like we had so much heart, we had so much drive, we had so much motivation. So looking at both teams, I think um, you can't really compare it, right? So. Okay, so yeah, this the natural like skill of just playing volleyball, not even being coached, just just seeing how how everyone we have spiking, we have digging, we have setting, we have serving. Like all of the skills are covered in this um, season eighty two team. Yeah, I think that's why when I talk to like Silabea, Silamadi, Siladina, and even you, like you're really emotional when you talk about that season eighty one championship because it was all heart for you guys. And the yeah. sacrifices that you made. Because then in season 81, Pongai had to transfer to the open hitter position from being the libero. And then even Jules changing position. So I think when you, you can't really compare those two seasons, even if it, it was just like one team. Yeah. Basically like just one team, the Ateneo team. And season 82, you're right. I think you did have like all the people that you needed, like, skill-wise. Because you had Jaja, who's re- a really good setter. You had two go- good open spikers. And then you have, well, Kat Valentino, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I really think the character carried on from season 81 was going to be carried on to season 82. So it's just like that level every time a new team or rebuilding or whatever comes, it'll be carrying on Coach O's character and just, um, yeah, that same idea of, only the championship. Kat, you've come a long way from Canada to uh, Ateneo. And it's amazing hearing your story of how, you know, you didn't embrace, you didn't embrace it in the beginning, but you found a home in Ateneo. And you've also found a home uh, with regards to your club team in the pros in the PVL, the Choco Mucho Flying Titans, who just added two more Ateneans Jamie LaVittoria and Pongay Gaston, how do you feel about that? That you're reunited with them in Chocomucho? Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely exciting. Um, it's like an Ateneo reunion again, and it's <laughs> like I never even left Ateneo. So honestly, it's just I'm so thankful and so happy for them to be joining. And uh, it's not even just about volleyball; it's also just about being with friends and just having fun on the court. Yeah, like right right now. I mean, it makes you even more excited to to go back. It's not it's not just to play; it's to see your friends. When you heard that uh, the UAAP was going to be canceled because of the pandemic, and initially you didn't want to play your last year anymore because you know you didn't want to go through the rigorous training anymore, and then you decided to come back, and you really wanted to get that championship. That that's what was season 82 was all about for you like getting that back to back and being with the girls again what did it feel like having to cancel the season um it was frustrating i and it was very just disappointing um i can't even explain how not just the fact that i can't um get that championship anymore it's the fact that i was enjoying playing with these group of girls uh we went to baguio and went to japan and it was so much fun and it was just so much sacrifice again. And I guess when you sacrifice so much with a group of girls, you get, you just create this bond that you start to miss them and you start to miss playing on the court. And it's just for, I'm sure all the athletes, it's just heartbreaking, but um, I was definitely understanding with the situation and um, I learned to accept it now. Moments ago, you said that right now your focus is on volleyball. But what type of future do you envision yourself with regards to the sport? Like, let's say the UAP makes some sort of exception because of what happened and still allows you to play next year, even though you're already 25. Would you go for it if, if the opportunity arises? Or would you just be content in continuing your career in the PVL and try to win a championship with Denden Den and the rest of your former Ateneo teammates and the other additions that they have on the squad? Um, I'm, <laughs> I guess I can't really, um, I'm not gonna be able to give you the proper answer and I know you're wanting a definite one for sure. Um, it's just, it's so hard to decide right now mm -hmm. with everything and just the pandemic and you don't even know what the situation for UAP is going to be. But since you asked, like, oh, if, if I were given the opportunity, um, I right now I can't say yes and I can't say no. Because if anything, I've learned don't make a decision right away, just like what I did last year. So for now, I just um, it's still up in the air. But you would consider it, right? I mean, it's of the course, UAAP. I'll consider it. <laughs> even yeah, with I mean, even with the oval, even with the oval again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I went, wow. back, I went back, so you never know. <laughs> okay, what about the PVL, Kat? You know, teaming up with Dan. Have you guys ever been teammates before? No, I don't Ooh, think so. No. Okay, so yeah. so how excited are you about that? You know, reuniting with your former teammates and teaming up with Dan Dan for the first time. Yeah, I'm very excited. I've heard so much. I've seen so many videos and just um, her background in the UAP is is also amazing. And it's it's just another reason why I'm excited to go back to Chacamucho because I know that this the team we have now is going to be um, improving and where we could really um, do well in the upcoming PVL conference. So I'm just excited to see what we can show to the league. Dan, how excited are you to have Kat as your teammate. I mean, the first time she went to Ateneo, you weren't there, but now you definitely are going to team up. I'm really excited. <laughs> I was already practicing how to set to her. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you like said, yeah. Just said, uh, setting opposite, that's hard, but yeah. Yeah, that'd be, mm. I'm excited for that also. <laughs> I kept on asking uh, my teammates. How does Kat like her sets away from the net? How, does she like it high? I was already practicing oh, yeah. Kat, so. Yeah, too bad it got cut short, but yeah, soon, I hope soon. So Kat, um, for, for our last question, um, any regrets? Like, I mean, you're obviously you're in Canada right now, you grew up there and then 
you know, you went to the Philippines to restart your life. And again, we'd like to stress that it's not easy for anybody to make that decision. But like if you had to go through it all over again, would you have done anything differently? Um, no, definitely not. And I definitely say 100% no regrets and just thankful for uh, where I am today. And we are thankful to you, Kat, for sharing to us your inspiring story. Such an amazing journey, Kat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kat, for taking time out of your busy day. And we're looking forward to seeing you guys team up in the PVL for the Chocomucho Flying Titans. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And thank you again to Kat Tolentino for joining us here on Volleyball DNA. Thank you. Bye. See you guys in the next episode. Bye. Thank you for watching Volleyball DNA. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get notified for future episodes and interview highlights. And while you're at it, head over to our Facebook page by clicking on the link in the description.